Welcome to this video segment on explicit cursors. This is Claire Rajan and in this video segment I'll be demonstrating the use of explicit cursors in PL SQL. I have SQL star plus open and I'm connected to the database as the user HR. Now I'm going to first write a program in which I'm going to write a query and the program is being written to display the first names of the employees who earn a salary greater than 12,000. Declaring a variable called VName of varchar2 type and in the body of the program I'm going to write select first name into VName from employees where the salary is greater than 12,000. I then want to display the value of that variable on the screen so I have a DBMS output line VName followed by an end. So this is a rather simple program which is intended to display the names of the employees earning a salary greater than 12,000. Now the error that I get is exact fetch returns more than requested number of rows. Now let's take a look at the program once again. But this particular select statement that I have written is one that returns more than one row. It's because uh, there are many employees who's, who earn a salary greater than 12,000. The select statement is returning multiple rows. Now in such a program which contains a select statement that returns more than one row, you should rewrite the program using an explicit cursor. In the video segment, um, in an earlier video segment, I explained the theory behind explicit cursors. I explained the four main steps involved in explicit cursor management, namely declaration of the cursor, opening the cursor, fetching the cursor into memory variables, and closing the cursor. There are also what are called as the explicit cursor attributes that can be used to determine the status of an explicit cursor. I'm going to rewrite this program using the explicit cursor. Leaving uh, the variable VNAME de uh, VNAME's declaration as it is, I'm going to create another declaration for the cursor. Uh, I'm calling the cursor as EMP curve just because it corresponds to the, uh, the EMP table. And uh, it's based on the select statement that was returning more than one row. So it was select first name from employees where the salary was greater than 12,000. So this is uh, the, the same select statement that was here has now been uh, put into the declaration section, uh, section and been associated with the cursor. Notice that I did not write the into clause when I wrote uh, the, the cursor's declaration. I'm removing the select statement from the body and uh, the second step um, related to a cursor was opening the cursor. So I've said open EMP curve. This is then going to be followed by a fetch. Now the fetch is uh, being done inside a loop end loop structure so that it can be done repeatedly for every row of the cursor. The fetch uh, syntax is fetch cursor name into uh, the memory variables. I have only one memory variable here so I'm going to save in into v uh, name. I also have to check uh, to see if uh, there are the a row was fetched or not because if a row is not fetched that is it goes past the last row in the em uh, in the cursor itself uh, the fetch will fail and th at this point you would want to exit the cursor so we have exit when emp cur percent, uh, percent not found so i'm using one of the attributes of the cursor to exit from the loop now if, if it is found, that is a row is fetched, the exit will not happen and uh, the value that is contained in VName will then have to be displayed on the screen. I'm going to end the loop and uh, do the last step uh, related to a cursor which is closing the cursor. So I have close cursor name. So executing the program, I have uh, the names of all those employees who earn a salary that was greater than 12,000. Going back to the program, uh, I'll introduce uh, a few more changes to this program. I'll incorporate the use of the is open attribute as well as the percentage row count attribute. Now the is open attribute is normally used to check to see if the cursor is opened or not. And uh, what you would want to do is open it only if it's not already open. 
So uh, in the body of the program, uh, before opening it, I'm going to write a check saying if not EMP cur percent is open, then open the cursor. I have to close the if, which I've done using the end if. So this is literally uh, literally reads as if the cursor is not already open, open the cursor. And um, now what I'm also going to do is when I'm displaying the name of the employee, I want to see a numeric value associated uh, with the name. For example, I want to see employee one colon and then the name of the employee. Now uh, the employee, the word employee itself is just a string. So I'm going to put it in single quotes, combine that with um, the name of the cursor emp cur percent row count attribute so uh, emp cur percent row count will return one when the first row is fetched two when the second row is fetched and so it literally creates a sequential numeric value which makes this output a lot more readable i'm going to combine that uh, with a colon for readability's sake followed by uh, a, co a combination with the name of the employee clearing my screen and running the program again. This is what I wanted to see. I wanted to see employee one colon and the name of the employee Michael to uh, Shelley and so on. Now uh, coming back to the program, I'm going to make a uh, one more change to the program to show you what uh, would need to be done if the select statement re was returning more than one column. So if you look at the select statement here, it uh, is retrieving only the first name. But if I have a select statement that was retri retrieving multiple um, columns, then uh, for instance, if I had a first name and salary being retrieved, what I would then have to do is uh, declare a second variable, let's say called vsal. This one is corresponding to salary, so it's of number type. Uh, and uh, what I would then have to do is in the fetch, when I'm fetching the cursor into the memory variables, I'll have to put a comma followed by the name of the second variable corresponding to the salary column. I may also want to see the salary. So what I'll do is in, in, in addition to seeing uh, the, the output as it was before, which is employee one colon and the name Michael, I also want to see the salary. So I'm going to put this words and the salary is combined with the value of the variable vsal. So we should be able to see employee one colon Michael and the salary is and the numeric value. So running the program again, here is the desired output. I see employee one Michael and the salary is 13,000. So in this tutorial, I demonstrated the use of the explicit cursor. I hope you find this tutorial useful. Thank you for your time and thank you for listening.